Waiguruji Gakasa, Waiguruji Kifate, thank you for joining me, Jag Singh, for another dose of Positive Minds on the Seek channel. Positive Minds is a program which I like to bring on inspirational and informative individuals who give us advice and tips on how we can better our lives and the people around us. After the show, you can download my book, Unbreakable. It's uh, my ebook on Amazon. Unbreakable was a story about the tough times I faced uh, during uh, my childhood in East London during the 1970s and how I got from there to here. Like I said, that's Unbreakable, available on as an ebook on Amazon. Also, after the show, you can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jag Sing I Can, and you can catch up on some of the previous episodes of Positive Minds and see the amazing guests I've interviewed on this show. Now, today's show is about a, um, there's once a girl, she's about seven years old, and she started writing stories and old illustrations, and she had a dream of being a publisher one day and publish her own magazine. So today I'd like to thank Lulu Skanse for joining me on Positive Minds today. Lulu, thank you so much for joining me today. Hello, Jack. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So Lulu, tell me about your amazing magazine. So we are a children's story magazine, which is all about beautiful stories, illustrations, and you know those those inspirational stories that when you are a child you listen and you are told or you read them, and then when you grow up you always remember them. It's that's what it is about. It's about reading for fun and being inspired by beautiful stories. We are a fifty-two page magazine. Uh, created in the UK, but we are sold all over the world. Thank you. You and another colleague, right, came up with this idea for the magazine, is that right? Yes. Uh, so my my co-founder, Leslie Kofop, and I, we have worked together many years ago. We've been, uh, we've known each other for over 20 years, working in different magazines, in, in different uh, publishers uh, around the UK. and. We actually work with publishers from France and Italy as well. And we always had a dream of getting together and starting our own business. And then when we finally managed to do so, we realized there was a gap in the market for this type of product for children. And we remembered from our own childhood how nice it was to how, how much we loved the stories and how life changing they were. So we created Story Time in 2014. So it started off with an idea, and that's what the show is about, Lulu. It's about creativity, you know, finding something and making something out of nothing. And that's exactly what your friend and you did. I understand you both had media background and you combined your experience and, and came up with this idea. And I love that. That's brilliant. Yes, it's quite, a, I, think it, I think it's a combination of uh, having an idea and doing the right uh, planning for it to happen. So we worked uh, for a few years building up the resources to be able to launch it, but we had the right experience and and we had the right uh, background. So it's, you know, it's always a combination of a dream and uh, a lot of work. <laughs> and, and I think you hit the nail on the head there, Lulu. Preparation is the key. I mean, just diving into something um, sometimes doesn't work out so well. Um, preparation is the key. Oh, some people over prepare, but I think yeah. it's great that you both had the experience and, and you combined that and you came with the idea of Story Time magazine. So that's brilliant. That's excellent. Yeah, there was that little moment where you have to be prepared enough, but you have to take a chance because you're never going to be completely ready. You're never going to have all the answers. But it is finding that moment where you take the leap. Leap, the leap of faith. <laughs> you go forward yes, and you indeed. take the leap of faith and that you see was... how it goes. And if you fail, you fail. You know, it will, we don't always, we're not always going to be successful in what we do. And we have to accept that. But, you know, you have to try and you have to, you combine, you brainwave, you know, you brainstormed together and you came up with great ideas. Indeed. And uh, Leslie, Leslie is also a very good uh, planner. He's very good uh, in in visualizing different scenarios. So we had a lot of planning involved, in seeing all the different case scenarios we could encounter, and and you know you have to be flexible to know that things might not go exactly as you were planning, but then you can adjust your sales and make the changes and keep going. But that that vision and that resilience are a big part of of making 
a business work. And tell, tell me about your educational path to, to, to get the experience, the media background. Where did it all start? Where did educational background start, please? <clears throat> uh, so I, uh, I, I had a degree in media and advertising back in Brazil. I'm uh, half Brazilian, half Italian. Uh, I grew up in Brazil and I did my first degree there. And then I started working very, very soon after. And I went to Germany and worked there for a while. And then I decided to come to the UK to do a, an MA in communication design at St. Martins, which was quite a renowned college for, for design and, and visual arts and communication, because I always liked working with that type of media. And uh, once I got here and finished my degree, I, I got a job in publishing and I sort of never looked back and I publishing had, you know, I, I, always liked the writing and I always liked designing and, and in a way publishing, I found very quickly, it was my true calling somehow. I really found myself into the printed media, I really enjoyed putting the two things together and, and yeah, so this, this is now over 22 years ago, but yeah. And, and what you just said there, Lulu, it was your true calling. I, I love that. I love that because in life, I believe that many people get that true calling. And you know, some people decide to ignore it. Uh, some people decide to put it on the back burner. You know, maybe one day I'll get to do it, you know. And it, but it, it's a vision of hard work and determination and that pathway of education that it's all gone towards the media and the publishing world clearly shows that you was on a war path. You was going to get there no matter what happens. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, sometimes I do find myself working and thinking that I've always been doing that somehow, that that I, you know, even my earliest memory from my childhood, I was drawing, I was writing, I was putting things together. And, and sometimes it does not feel like a job. It does feel like I'm, I'm still playing. <laughs> And, and that's what it is. If you can do, if you can find something in your life that's going to be your passion and, and you're working it, it's earning your living. I mean, it, it doesn't feel like a job. You're right. You're 100% right because you don't wake up because you want to go in and clock in your card and clock out your card. You, you wake up because you think to yourself, what can I do today? You know? and, you, and now and again, I'm sure you look at that Storytime magazine and you go, I made this. Yes. No, and I still get it extremely proud every month when we have a new cover and we get the printed issue i look at it and i feel really happy you know i have the same enthusiasm seven years on than i had from issue one it has not changed if anything has got a little bit better even because as we grow like the other we just launched it in china recently and when i got the first chinese issue i was truly overwhelmed by it because you know just to see everything in in chinese and to know that it was going to be out there just made me extremely proud and, and what you said there it, it's just not about um looking it's not just about creating your dreams uh, like your magazine it's, it's just not just about that Look, looking at your magazine and say i created this we can also do this other areas of our life as well we can have a happy family we can have happy children we can make a happy relationship and we can stand back and say i made this someone can write that book that's taken them years to write and when it finally gets published you know it's that feeling of achievement that as humanity is important to us i think everything that you put your heart on and you really do it from your heart you will succeed i think that is that is how we operate i think a lot of times we think that we don't have control and things happen to us. I don't believe anything happened to us. I think we are the agent. We choose uh, how to, to change things and how to make them happen. But I agree completely with you. I don't think there is a formula of happiness. I don't think the job is the happiness or the house is a, it's whatever you wanted it to be because you, you know, yeah, as you said, your family, your relationship, the simplest things you do can bring that amount of joy and if you feel that you have done your best, you will be happy at what you achieve. And, and sometimes as human beings, we're going to be disheartened. Sometimes our relationships are not yeah. going to be going the way they want, we want them to be. Sometimes our um, achievements are not going to give us, our actions are not going to give us the results we want. But please, my advice to everyone, I'm sure Lulu, you will agree, is don't be disheartened, okay? No, you, you can't stay down all the time. 
I agree. And I think it, we have the power to work back, come back from, from any disaster. Like it will happen. It's not a straight line. And the, and the, you know, the, they talk a lot. I mean, we have a, a new sec section in the magazine called My Mind Matters about talking about emotions with kids and, and, you know, when you feel sad, when you feel happy, when you feel stressed, because I think we should all make peace with happiness is not a line, it's a journey. It's not a, a point that you get and you get and you are happy and you are forever happy. It's just a path and you're going to have moments of happiness and moments that are difficult, but you, you are the one on this journey and, and you're going to get there and it's going to be beautiful no matter how, how your journey is. And what you said there is it's not just a straight walk. You're 100% right, because if it was easy, everybody would do it. You know, <laughs> only you know now, Lulu, right? And I'm going to ask, you know this, only you know how much hard work you have yeah. put. Only you know the nights you've stayed up and you've thought yeah. about that idea and you've been you right. Away. Only you know how much hard work you have done to get where you want today. It, it doesn't just it's fall into your lap. It doesn't just fall into no. your hands. Mm. You have to graph. You have to work hard. No, yes, I would never, I mean, to anyone, you never say to someone, oh, you were so lucky. I don't think that plays in, but everything is hard work in life. And of course, running a publishing company, I mean, we are completely independent and, and self-funded. So in story time, Leslie and I uh, started it with no, you know, we didn't raise capital. We we actually self-funded and and self-funding a publishing company is, is a big big ask is a, is a huge deal. So of course, uh, it's not uh, easy every day. It's much easier now than it was, but I would say probably the first four years was were extremely challenging and uh, there were a lot of variables we had to learn along the way how to, to stay afloat and, um, and difficulties. And yeah, you have to find the right partners. You ha and you have also to find how to grow. So it's, it's never easy and you, you can never sit back and say it's done. It's never done. <laughs> and what you just said there, the first four years, I've spoken to many writers, boxers, uh, people in sports, uh, inventors who have said, and, and business people who have said the first four years of starting was tough. As funny as that four years. I think the four yeah. years is the test. Yes, they say the fifth year or more, they don't know you're going to survive no matter what you, you have crossed that line. Of, so we were quite happy when you turned it five. And, and I think that was a big, uh, big change for us as well. But uh, I guess it does take a while until you, you really master all the, the, the challenges that you got to use it to it. <laughs> I mean, if you can do it earlier, that's fine. But for people out there who are starting a business or whatever, it just just remember this. You know, four years of hard work of learning your craft, of learning the ins and outs of the business, the contacts. It takes time. Everything takes time. And if it's worth having, it's worth working for. Um, Lulu, the magazine, um, Storytime magazine, is it internet-based or paper-based, please? As both of them, we have a printed version, which is how we started. So the hard copy, as you can see some behind me and then we have launched a digital platform where we have our complete archive so we have published over 700 stories and uh, over uh, more than thousand pages of activities to go with every issue and all that is available in our digital platform alongside audio versions of the stories so so you can you can access the story time both ways I, because I, we I, had when we spoke last, we spoke on the phone. Sorry, when we spoke on the phone. You said that um, uh, it was paper based, but due to the pandemic, you, you thought, wait a minute, how can we get to these children? And then once again, you and Leslie brainstormed and came up with the idea of having it internet based, which couldn't have been easy to, to convert. Indeed, uh, yes, the the lockdown made it uh, more urgent. It was always in our plan to to create that, but of course, the lockdown there was a lot of disruption with the mailing. A lot of the post was not getting to people. A lot of the schools that use us were closed and it needed the children to access the content. So we reacted rather quick and, and developed it in, in just a few months, less in the first lockdown. And then we launched early this year and, um, and made it accessible to all the schools and also our international clients and everybody that could not get it on the post. And then we 
since we are at it, we started doing the audio versions, which have been amazingly well received because, you know, reluctant readers or any anybody who has English as a second language, the audio is incredibly beneficial to them. But also as a bedtime story, you can just play the story and and listen to it while you are getting ready for bed and, and things like that. So it's it just brought another dimension to our magazine and has been really rewarding to see the feedback. So how many approximately how many subscribers would you say you have at, at the present moment roughly? So in the UK we have around 50k um, and wow. worldwide we, we have yeah we have the last two years have been particularly excellent for us because of all these these new uh, ways of offering story time now we have sort of almost doubled our size and uh, we have a version in Singapore a version in Netherlands and we just launched it in China we don't have the Chinese numbers yet so roughly we have about 25,000 subscribers in around the world but we imagine this number is going to be substantially larger once we get the Chinese numbers uh, through as a king they you know that they start getting the results in January or February I mean that, that, those figures you just told me they're 50,000 but it clearly shows that there is a need for story time for, for it's it, it's it's needed children want to read it parents want to read it to their children it, it, there is a need out there definitely I think it, uh, you know a lot of, when we had the idea for story time a lot of the content available for children were branded or or game related you know things that were trend based and a lot of the children's magazine had a lot of plastic toys and so on and i remember when we first came up with story time we were told many times oh forget it, it's never going to work it doesn't have plastic toys on the cover oh it doesn't have any brand it doesn't have any tv uh, programs you know characters in it and we we were discouraged a lot by by distributors and and people that thought the children's market needed either a TV or a toy relate relationship to work, and uh, we were very confident that actually children like reading, like good quality content, and the stories are evergreen. You know, I have never met someone that doesn't have stories that they read as a child that still resonates with them it's universal and that's the reason why stories get told over and they they are evergreen so we we really felt confident and yeah we have been very lucky to be proven right but uh but you know you you we didn't know because we felt the same way about stories so there was a personal resonance with with ourselves so and what you said there again, people told you it can't be done, it can't be sold, you can't do this, you can't do that. And, and, and that's what it's all about. It's about persistence. You know, you sat there and you was determined that you was going to make it happen. And, and you, you proved them all wrong, basically, haven't you? you by, by creating what you have created with 50,000 subscribers, you, you can't go wrong. You know, you've done the right thing. And if you look in our days, there is a massive movement out there for magazines without plastic that don't come with toys that have no plastic bags and stuff like that. So actually nowadays people want more magazines like ours and a lot of uh, the old fashioned children's magazines are out of the, the shelves because of the whole green movement and so on. But you know, we have had a green policy about we send our magazines out in paper envelopes. We haven't used plastic on anything. And, and that has been our policy since 2014. And Lulu, I also understand you've created, again, you and Leslie have sat down, you've created an amazing marketing team uh, that actually focus on going to schools and working with schools together. Yes. So uh, when we, we launched our primary market were parents and children, and that's two big part of our, our subscribers. But we got a lot of teachers writing to us and saying they were using story time in the classroom because it was a nice way to make the lessons more exciting, more interesting, and and children responded quite well to to magazines instead of books because they were shorter, they were more tactile, etc. So we realized there was a big market in this, the school market was quite a big market for us. 
So we started learning all about it. We had no experience on it, but we then developed a lot of resources to support our magazine in the classroom. So we create lesson ideas, glossaries, comprehension exercise. So every month we have a uh, huge amount of content that helps the teachers and the schools to apply our stories in the classroom and, and take it further, you know, help the children to learn from the stories as well. And nowadays, so, I would so say the schools are 50% of our market. Brilliant, thank you. So Lily, if people want to actually go to your website, or people want to um, go on your social media to find out about story time, how can they contact you, please? So we have uh, two websites. We have the storytimemagazine.com, which is our brand website. But we also have storytime.hub.com. Uh, storytime and that's our digital platform where you can subscribe to the audio versions, the digital versions, and the printed version as well. And finally, our social media or our channels are at Storytime Mag, all of them, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Okay, and also, are you always looking for uh, illustrators and more stories to come your way as well? Can people send you stuff? Yes, we have uh, in the website, we have submission pages with all the information that illustrators and writers need to send us stories and the portfolios. And then we tend to look at those once a month and get back and, and when we have opportunity. But we're always open, like we're constantly receiving submissions and talking to people and, and hoping to share new artists with our audience. So there you go, guys. There's a special invite to all you guys out there who are illustrators or are drawers who are writing children's magazines, uh, writing children's stories. Get in touch with Lulu, and, and and you know if it's okay, she may you know get together with you. And you might be able to publish your your book or or maybe to draw for her magazine. Lulu, listen, thank you so much for coming on Positive Minds today and sharing your story and advice. It's really been great to have you on. It's been great to meet you, and best of luck. And I. I think it's great the message you're putting out there. So very nice to be in it. <laughs> and, and, and this program wouldn't be uh, possible without guests like yourself, Lulu, who come in here and talk about building something from, from, from nothing and making it a, a, a reality. And, you know, may you go from strength to strength. And I'm sure I'll have you back on the program again to speak about where you're going with your, your Storytime magazine. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, so there you have it, okay? A, a seven-year-old girl starts drawing, okay? She starts writing stories, uh, illustrating, and she has a dream of becoming something, of making something become a reality, something that she can share, her, which is a passion, and she wants to share it with the whole world one day. And she does. She does do it. She makes it happen. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't an easy road to walk, but she gets together, she brainstorms with her colleague, Leslie, and they make it happen. We all can make it happen, okay? Find your passion. Find your passion, find your path, find out which way you're going to walk. And there's help out there. You've got, you've got Google, you've got YouTube. Find out, learn, reach out to people, network, okay? But whatever happens, don't let that dream go because it can become a reality. You just have to make it happen. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining me, Jag Singh, on Positive Minds again. Until the next time, please keep smiling and keep moving forward. Waiguji Kakasa. Why could you keep up there?